Hi guys, so in today's video, it's going to be a little bit different today. I'm actually going to show you um, how I basically work with my uh, Scolopendra, or for people that don't know what that is, um, it's basically a giant centipede. So the species I'm going to be working with today is uh, called Scolopendra dehani, or the Vietnamese giant centipede. So before we begin, uh, I'd like to stress that centipedes are extremely aggressive. Um, if they are disturbed and they are quite willing to bite their bite is nothing really to joke about um, it's known to be quite painful um, and relatively medically significant um, so a bite won't be good now we'll go through the tools that I'm going to use today and um, I'll also mention the reason I'm doing this is this is the way that I found has worked for me um, others have found other ways However, the way I work with my centipede is I will use a half and half substrate of moist layer of um, eco earth and a dry layer at the top to prevent mycosis, which is basically a fungal infection that centipedes can get through too high of humidity. Um, and I'll do this sort of once every four months uh, when it completely dries out on the bottom layer. Um, so we'll go through the tools that are going to be used. So the main tool, which is relatively important, you can do it straight out of the centipede's cage. Um, I do do that often. However, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show a safer alternative to doing it that way. So you can either get a large plastic container, or I'm using here a wooden box. Uh, the most important thing is it has to have smooth sides so that the centipede can't actually climb, and it has to be longer than the centipede's length. So the centipede that we're working with today is um, 8 inches long. Um, we will use a paintbrush. Uh, any of you that keep tarantulas or scorpions or also centipedes will know that this is quite an uh, important tool as they can bite the end um, and it doesn't damage their fangs. So we're also going to work with two tongs um, just in case sort of anything goes wrong. And this pair will be more protected because of the rubber tips. Um, so that's the tools we will be working with. Um, now there is two options once you um, have basically got the centipede out. You can either leave it in the main container or you can use um, a catch container. Now I am using a Cricut tub. Um, I couldn't find anything bigger but obviously if you guys were to try and replicate this method yourselves uh, you'd probably want to get a bigger uh, container so it's much safer um, so I'm just going to place the centipede tub inside of here um, and then we'll get on with the main part of the video right so here's the centipede's enclosure as you can see the substrate is quite high so we're going to remove this um, and we're going to remove the furnishings now you want to be extremely careful when you're removing the furnishings and the safest way to do this is to use your pair of tongs um, and to basically check that the centipede isn't attached to any of it and remove it carefully. Um, so I'll do that now. Uh, as you can see, it's not connected to any of the bark. Um, now you will remove that and actually take it out of this main container as you don't want any method for it to be able to climb out. Um, so we'll place them to the side. Now, as you can see, it may look like the centipede actually isn't in here. Um, some of this substrate's moist because of underneath the uh, water bowl. Um, but she actually is. So this is where the paintbrush comes into effect. Now you would gently move this around in the enclosure and you will see why this main big box comes in to um, help when we actually unearth her. Um, so I'll unearth her first and come back to the video so you guys don't have to wait for um, well, however long it takes us to actually find her, so... Right. So, we're coming back to the video now because um, I removed most of the substrate and as you can see her antennas are just there. So we're going to now slowly remove this substrate um, so we don't disturb her too much. Now I can see her moving about in here now. Um, now you always want to be careful when working with um, any of the centipede species. Um, as they are extremely fast. Now we're going to earn her for now. Um, they aren't too happy about being disturbed. And will come out quite aggressively towards being disturbed. 
So you can see now she's starting to basically come out of um, where she was hidden. Now you can see why we use the tub. She pretty much reaches the full length of here. Um, and she, as you can see now, she's actually climbing out. Now this is when it comes into use as we can encourage her to fully leave the enclosure by placing it on its side. Um, and we'll actually get her to leave the enclosure. Um, so you can see now she's actually starting to do the typical um, behavior of a scolopendra that's been disturbed. Now, for the benefits of this video, I'll show you both methods of both basically leaving them in here, which is this method here. As you can see, she can't climb any further than this. But as I'm trying to show you guys both methods, um, I will actually show you the capture method. So I'll just grab the tub. So as you see, I've actually removed her um, main enclosure and you would do this to prevent any obstacles in the way. So we actually place the cricket tub in the cage and I'd like to stress, this is my way of doing it. Um, I would advise to use a slightly larger um, tub if you were to do it yourself and you basically allow it to go in on its own accord and you slowly place the lid down over it. Now, sometimes they will push out. This is why I recommend a larger tub. Um, as you've seen, if you were to have done that too quick, she would have reacted in a more negative way and you would have potentially got a bite. Um, so, they are quite fast animals. Um, this is why they can be difficult to work with um, for sort of novices and why they recommend for more experienced um keepers so you can see now we've managed to fully tub it up now you would then leave the centipede in the tub now I would advise if you did do this to place it in another container just in case they managed to push it off because they are extremely good escape artists and are known to push lids off of stuff like this um, so now she's placed in here um, we can move her to the side as we know we're here. she's here. Um, so we come over to uh, this substrate here. So it's quite dry, um, the main layer. We're going to actually remove um, some more of it so that we can add a higher uh, dry surface layer. Uh, this will basically allow her to burrow down into the substrate when she wants to molt because as you probably know um, if you're tarantula or any uh, other insect keepers or arachnid keepers such as um, scorpions they need humidity to molt otherwise uh, they can have great issues so now we've got this dry layer here um, we can break it up so it's more sort of broken um, we bring over our spray bottle and actually spray it down um, so I'll just add some more pressure So we'll actually add some of the water to um, Allow the substrate to become a slightly bit uh, wetter on the surface layer So that she has a layer that she can molt in um, So if you don't want to see this um, As it is basically me just mixing up this substrate now um, so You can skip ahead to the point where all the substrates put in or if you want um, the point where I will actually add the centipede on. So now this is a slightly moist layer. Um, you want to slightly pat it down so it becomes quite firm. This will actually act quite well for um, the centipede to actually burrow. You can see there that she is actually trying to get out um, using those fangs. Those fangs um, are extremely powerful um, and they're actually a pair of modified legs allowed to let them inject venom so that layer is done so now we will add the dry layer of substrate straight on top now I have found this method worked for me um, it did allow her to molt as she did have mycosis um, before her last molt you may have seen her um, after molt video so now this layer is in we will now start adding the um, furnishings or the decor so as you may know if you are a centipede keeper 
um, or you may not know. Centipedes are extremely touch sensitive, so they like to have things in their environment that they can feel. Um, it basically allows them to feel slightly more secure about the environment they live in. Um, as they can know their surroundings. So I basically add this uh, vine in. I put it into sort of a loop shape and then tuck it into the corner. This basically gives her a lot of area where um, she's sort of exposed to the vine so that she can constantly sort of feel secure um, and create her home where she wants. She does often use that cork hide. However, she has started to burrow a lot more now. Um, so I do use a water dish. I use a relatively high glass one um, Just because it's heavy and prevents her knocking it over um, I always fill the water dish up um, Just below the full um, Amount just so it doesn't overflow as it sort of defeats the object of having a dry substrate Now's the point in the video where I will actually add her back this can potentially be the sort of more riskier point of the um, transfers because obviously your hands are quite close to the tub. You can use tongs um, and I would advise using tongs if you were to do it. Um, they are very unpredictable. I do keep stressing it but it really is an issue with these guys. Um, they are known for being extremely quick and quite happy to bite so now we've slowly removed the tub I will actually show you the safer method of doing it and this is where the tongs come into play or she will often actually just go through the small gap you've made yourself um, now when this happens you want to slowly remove the tub um, but it's best to try and not disturb them as much as possible so you keep them staying in. Now often they will try and climb back out of the um, enclosure. Now you can just basically gently poke them back in and add the lid back on. So thanks for watching the video guys. Remember I am going to be doing a Q&A soon so ask any questions you want and drop them in the comment section. So yeah again thanks for watching. Hope has helped some of you guys that may be considering getting a Scolopendra species or may want to get a centipede so you can sort of look at how you'd work with one and help you if interested. So like and subscribe for more content.